Good morning. My sailing school today got canceled due to a tropical storm. So St. Augustine's not going to be really nice for beginning sailors today. So instead, we are headed into Palatka to hear a lecture from someone from the St. Augustine Lighthouse Archaeological Group. And we're going to be hearing about the newly discovered wreck on the St. John's River. I think it's called a flat boat and it was either a boat to transport troops or maybe some sort of thing around the Civil War. I'm not really sure. We're going to find out. Coming into Palatka, we see that there are so many historic homes and other historic buildings on the way to the Bronson and Mulholland House. On the left is St. Mark's Episcopal Church, and we're about to turn down a brick street to get to the Bronson Mulholland home. These streets make an interesting clacking noise as you drive across them. We're turning into the driveway, and just can't imagine how majestic it would be to have approached this home back in the early part of the century. Here's the Putnam Historic Museum, and right over here to the right is the Bronson Mulholland home where we are going for the lecture. So it looks like lots of people arriving for the event. The grounds here are just beautiful. It's still a pretty rainy day. I'm not even so sad that I'm not on the water today. <laughs> this would be quite the blustery, windy day to attempt to teach a beginning sailing school. So here we go. We were in for a bit of a surprise. There was quite a crowd and there was a waiting line and almost standing room only for seating. First we signed into the guest log and then we were introduced to Brendan Burke who works with the St. Augustine Lighthouse Archaeological Maritime Program or the LAMP program. He started off the lecture telling us about the river mules, the flatboats that were used in some places on the Ohio River and areas up there. And actually it was pretty fascinating to find out that while we historically thought that a lot of these vessels that were used for trade and for transportation were a little bit more picturesque, actually they were pretty flat with just a bit of a bluff bow with a bit of a curve to it and sometimes were dragged along by mules, thus the name mule boats, or propelled by long sweeps and with a rudder in the back and used to transport troops and also horses on them. Charleston, Philadelphia, Baltimore, uh, port cities don't consume all of their imports as we well know. They're often transshipped to the interior. And in the earliest days, what were our roads? They were the rivers. They were the creeks. Every creek stream, lake that could be paddled upon is part of our maritime history. We learned from Burke that this mule boat was similar to those found along the Chesapeake, used in the Ohio Canal and the Ohio Valley, and that those flatboats were similar to what was pictured with Washington crossing the Delaware, probably not the more romanticized version in that first shot that I showed. This one was found on the St. John's River by the Kelch family off of Whetstone Point, and it was found along with some 19th century artifacts. There was a weight from a turpentine hack and some bricks, and Burke said it was probably a ferry landing or a wharf or an old dock. I much preferred the second version of possible story, which would be that the second Florida Cavalry Captain Dickinson might have left it on the western shore of the St. John's River to cross over to St. Augustine to do some mischief. The wreck lies in publicly owned bottomlands, and what Lamp does is they record in place. And he said that this wreck and all of these flatboats have about the same historical importance as the U.S. Constitution because they carried our economy and they carried our troops in all major conflicts. And they were so easy to build. If you have an axe, you could build one. And that's why they persisted well until the 20th century. They were even used as ferries until post-World War II. This one was recorded in place, left in place, and will be preserved in the St. John's River for eternity. I was pleasantly surprised by the number of people in attendance at this lecture 
and absolutely delighted at how much information we received and how many questions the crowd had afterwards. Brandon Burke stayed after probably another hour or two just to answer questions from everyone. And while he was answering questions, they also had a little table set up in the dining room with all sorts of tidbits and snacks for everyone to enjoy with some punch. And while everyone was doing that, I took the opportunity to nip upstairs and look around and get a tour of the historic Bronson home. One of the reasons I wanted to come to this beach was to see the Bronson Mall Hauling House that I haven't been to in years and years. And right now I'm in the upstairs bedroom and as you can see, it is absolutely enormous. And there's a fireplace, there are walkthroughs on the windows. And how pretty is this? Absolutely beautiful, incredibly tall ceilings. For a bedroom, this is really, really enormous. We are upstairs in the Bronson Mulholland home, and we were told that most of the furniture is original, and I found that this was quite a handbag that someone had. Look how beautiful this furniture is. So this was just a chance to get to hear about the flats boats and get to tour the home. These windows are really unique in that they open onto a porch and you can see you can either move the sash up or you can move it up and open the window. It looks like you would still need to duck a little bit, but you could actually walk through the window. Lovely fireplace with the seating area. This bedroom is probably about 30 by 40 feet. It's absolutely huge. to take a really good look at these windows because they were so cleverly constructed with really deep hinges the bottom sections could be opened up completely allowing someone inside the home to walk completely out onto the porch they could just raise the top sash and duck a little bit under I suppose people maybe were a bit shorter and what a clever invention in order to get a little closer to the site of the flat bottom Rick, we have come to Tanglewild Park, which is on the St. Johns River, and it's maintained by Putnam County. And we're going to walk down the dock and see if we can look further to the east and see where the site of that wreck actually lies. So, a very windy, blustery day today. You can see why I didn't go sailing today. This is looking up toward the house at the Tangle Wild Park. And there's a nice kayak launch and a little ramp down to the water so that you can get down there and fish or crab. But look, real pretty stands of bamboo all the way along the property to help them hold the shoreline in there. And just a lot of pretty vegetation. Nice natural place. I'm glad they preserved it. I'm headed down to the banks of the St. John's River to take a look and try and look toward the east, see where that flat boat was found underwater. The lecture was really interesting getting to hear about historically what those boats were used for and how prevalent they were. And it sounds like they actually were used a lot more than the paddle wheelers that are so popular in photos postcards. And it is a blustery day on the St. John's River. Windy, gorgeous, 
Ooh, look at that. Lovely. That's where I'm going to be looking. It's more toward the east. To see if we can see where that was. Past that dock with the red roof. That's the Kelches where there's a windsock down there. That's about where they found that flat spot on boat. Thanks for watching. I'm going to end it here with a couple parting shots of the St. John's River and the view from Tangle Wild Park. We really enjoyed hearing about the flat boats and seeing the Bronson Mulholland House. So please like, share, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for joining. Bye.